Good day, everyone. I praise God for this opportunity to discuss one of the Pathfinder honors, and that is the birds. This honor is an introduction to those fantastic feathery friends. You will learn what makes birds different to other creatures and understand more about the creativity and the love of our God. You will reflect on how birds impact on the lives of people, especially the people of your country or where you live. There's plenty of practical things to do, identifying the birds, some by sight and some by sound. Now let's get started. There are six characteristics of birds. First is birds are endothermic. When you say endothermic, they are warm-blooded animals. They have vertebrates or hollow bones. They have four chambers of heart. They have feathers, absolutely, and all lay eggs. They have also scales on feet and legs. Birds who do not fly. These are the following birds. You have the penguins, ostriches, and emus. The smallest bird is called a hummingbird, while the largest bird is an ostrich. When it comes to migration, birds' regular periodic journey from one place to another for food, reproduction, or warmth. Now, these birds have these types of feathers in them. First, they have contour. Contour feather is a large feather that gives shape to birds' body. While the down feather, it is short, fluffy, traps heat, and it keeps the birds warm there are general characteristics of birds now their bone cavities are filled with air now notice that they don't have jaws or teeth but have a beak supported by small bones they have a rapid digestion with no internal food storage feathers have very light bearing surfaces the feathers are water resistant and lifeless Thus, there is no need for heavy blood vessels. Now, let's go to special characteristics of birds. They have feathers. They use it for flying. Also, the eyes of the birds, the beaks of birds, other special characteristics of birds. Feathers. Feathers has three parts. The quill or shaft. This quill or shaft feather is the stiff center which gives the feather strength. The down is a feather with quill in which young chicks are covered with down. Barbs come off the quill which toward the outer end it joins together in smooth web. The fluff is a soft portion at the base of the feather next to the body of the bird. So how about these special feathers? You have the Wilson snipe and the owl's special feather. Wilson's knife has two special feathers on each side of the tail that makes a musical sound when the snipe plummets downward in dive. The owl is the flight feathers of the wing and tail have tightly soft hairs around the edge that deaden the sound enabling owls to fly in absolutely silence. So don't you know that all birds shed their feathers once a year? If they should lose more from one side than the other, they would be unable to fly. Birds spread their feathers, which means that the birds can comb their feathers by its bill. Now, these feathers are oiled in order to shed rain. The oil gland is just above and in front of the root of the tail. Now, the bird will just squeeze the, land, the gland and then it comes forth the oil. Flying. The stem of the feathers are hollow. So some of the bones in the wings are hollow so that these air sacs in the bird's body could flap their wings. The wings propel the bird while the tail acts as the rudder. So how do birds fly? Notice that the top has less air pressure and this produces an upward force. This upward force is called a lift. The avian lung. The metabolic demands of flight are high, and to meet these demands, the avian lung must be much more efficient than the mammalian lung. 
In birds, the finest branches of the bronchi do not end in soft like alveoli. Instead, they form tube-like parabronchi through which air flows in only one direction. So in contrast to the tidal flow in mammals, because the air flow is one way, gases can be more efficiently exchanged and there is no dead air in the lungs. Can you notice now the anatomy of the bird? You have there the trachea, the syrinx, anterior air sacs, the lung in the middle, then you have the posterior air sacs. Let's go to the eyes of the bird. The birds do not seem the same thing with both eyes. This both eyes are like humans' eye too. The owl has eyes 10 times as sensitive to faint light as ours. A hawk can see a small prey one mile away. Birds have telescopic eyes which can adjust very quickly to see near or far like a self-focusing camera. So the bird's eyes are so big that their brain is squeezed to the rear of the skull. So in many birds, they, the eyes weigh more than the brain and some birds have a third eyelid. The third eyelid is like a windshield wiper as the bird rushes through the high sky. Beaks of birds. Now, sparrows have strong, short beaks for crushing seeds, while hummingbird has long and slender beak to feed on nectar from flowers. The owl has strong upper beak, which hooks over the lower part for tearing flesh of mice and other small animals. The pelicans has a beak designated or designed for scooping up fish from the water. The woodcock has a long, slender beak, which it pushes into the ground to feel about or to feed about for worms. Duck has broad, flat, soft beak, good for seizing insects and plants in the water and holding them while the water strains out through the beak's edges. Now, when it dives for fish, this pelican or some water birds, it comes up with three gallons of water along with fish. Now, what are some other special characteristics of birds? Birds don't have teeth. So teeth needs heavy jaws and muscles, so birds just use their gizzard, a part of their stomach which grinds up for food. Now, as you can see, you have the elder duck. The elder duck picks up gravel which acts as teeth and grinds anything in the churning gizzard. How birds care for the young. Now, female birds lay about the same number of eggs in a clutch. Every baby bird in its egg has a tooth at the end of its bill. So when the baby bird always seems to be hungry, the female bird usually gets its beak on its mouth of the baby bird. So we have flightless birds. These flightless, flightless birds are the following. You have the kiwi, ostrich, penguin, cassowary, raya, and emo. Now let's take a look at each of them. First is the kiwi. The kiwi lives in the forest of New Zealand. It looks like a ball of feathers with legs. It is totally nocturnal and has poor eyesight. So it uses its sense of smell in groping around. So the eggs are five inches long and the male incubates eggs alone for two weeks and a half months. Ostrich. As what you have known that ostrich is the largest living bird and it is 8 feet tall and 345 pounds. It lives on the plants and deserts of Africa. It usually eats plants, lizards, and turtles including sand and gravel to help in digestion. Now, these are um, some of the special characteristics of, of, of ostrich. This ostrich is the only bird which has two toes on each foot. It takes 15 footsteps at 64 kilometers per hour, or it takes 15 footsteps at all, and its lifespan is only 70 years. Now, how about nesting habits of his young or of its young? An egg weighs three pounds at six inches diameter. The male sits on the eggs in the evening and the female during the day. So a one-month-old ostrich can run as fast as an adult ostrich do. 
female lay, lays as many as 10 eggs. The penguin. Penguin are an are birds which is an excellent swimmer. It lives most likely in Antarctica, New Zealand, Australia, and the Galapagos Islands. They usually eat fish and spend much of their life in water. These emperor penguins are the largest penguins at 3 feet tall and 100 pounds. Cassowary. Cassowary is a kind of bird that lives in Australia. It has blue head and neck with red streaks on the neck. It comes out at night and hides during the day. It is short-tempered and it is easily upset at the slightest disturbance. The female lays three to six large green eggs, which the male sits on for seven weeks. Raya. A raya bird is a South American bird that looks like an ostrich. It has three toes on each foot while the ostrich has two. It stands five feet and weighs 50 pounds. It lives on the plains of South Brazil, Uruguay, Paraguay, and Argentina. They live in flocks of five to 30 birds, and the east lives roots and insects. Emo, from Australia, this is an Australian bird. It is a vegetarian and consumes the harvest, causing great havoc to agriculture. Emus now live in the plains of eastern Australia. The nest is a simple hollow in the ground at the foot of a tree. It is the second largest bird after ostrich and it can run 48 kilometers per hour. You have this groundwater and air birds. Let's take a look at them. They are the following. Loons and grebes, tube noses, pelicans, waterfowl, vultures, hawks, and falcons, gallinaceous, herons, cranes, shorebirds, and gulls, pigeons and dove, cuckoos and roadrunners, owls, goat sucker, swift and hummingbirds, kingfisher, and woodpeckers. Those are the kinds of birds. Now let's go to perching birds. Perching birds includes flycatchers, the swallows, crows, ravens, and jays, nothatches, water oozels, or dippers, mockingbirds, and thrushes, pipets, shrikes, starlings, house sparrow, and English sparrow, and the last is the finches. Now, birds often has this useful to compare features of group creatures to see what is the same as other creatures. But in order to identify them, it is useful to find these differences or to find the differences as well. Now, as you can see, there are five classes of creatures with a backbone. Take note, with a backbone. This classes includes the fish. The fish is also what you call a ganta. The amphibians or the amphibia, reptiles, reptilia, birds, the abyss, and mammals, the mammalia. So these are some characteristics which set birds apart from all other creatures. All of the vertebrata have a backbone, but birds have a number of unique characteristics such as, as what we have discussed a while ago, they have unique characteristics with their flight, they have hard-shelled eggs, warm-blooded, they are covered with feathers, hollow bones which makes them fly, bone structure in the eye, keen eyesight, musical voice, ability to sense magnetic fields, and they are very colorful. When we have compared the various classes, we find that there are only a few things that are unique to the class abyss. First, they all lay hard-shelled eggs, which they incubate using their body temperature. They all covered with a feather structure that differs greatly from scales and fur. Hollow bones allow them to fly almost effortlessly. And a ring bone in the eyes of birds is what allows them to focus so well and have such keen eyesight. Okay, birds, as what you have known in your creation, in the creation story, they were created on the fifth day. You can see that one in Genesis chapter 1, verses 20 to 23. I have here a list of verses that are specified with this kind of birds. Example, you have pelican, raven, and owl. You can see them in Isaiah 34, verse 11. 
chicken recorded in Matthew 23 verse 37 and Luke 13 verse 34. Eagle in Jeremiah 49 verse 22, Jeremiah 4 verse 13, Job 9 verse 26, Deuteronomy 28 verse 49, Job 39 verses 27 to 29. And the last is the ostrich. You can find that in Micah 1 verse 8. Um, it is recorded in Child Guidance, page 46. Let me read it to you. Children should be encouraged to search out in nature the objects that illustrate Bible teachings and to trace in the Bible the similitude drawn from nature. They should search out both in nature and in holy writ every object representing Christ and those also that he employed in illustrating truth. Thus may they learn to see him in tree and vine, in lily and rose, in sun and star. They may learn to hear his voice in the song of birds, in the sighing of the trees, in the rolling thunder, and in the music of the sea. And every object in nature will repeat to them his precious lessons. What a wonderful message in Child Guidance, page 46. Now, God's love shown in birds. First, God created the birds for our enjoyment. Their cheerful songs and bright colors can lead us to thank God for His goodness. Aside from that, the adaptations of birds, especially their beaks, their legs and feet, it shows us that God is really powerful. He has His creative power. And lastly, we ought to trust God totally just as birds do. Now let me leave this verse to you. It is found in Luke 12, verse 6. I hope this will inspire you as you keep on searching and looking forward to learn these honor birds. It says here, are not five sparrows sold for two pennies? Yet not one of them is forgotten by God. Indeed, the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Don't be afraid. You are worth more than many sparrows. So I hope you have learned a lot from our discussion about birds. And thank you for this opportunity and may God bless us all.